everyone i don't know if i want to start referring everyone anyone who's viewing my videos as found the fam we'll see how that goes i don't know you guys let me know leave a comment right below if you like the sound of that but for now what's up found the fam i am still very terrible at making intros but nonetheless here we are second video on YouTube. The first one wasn't that bad. Hopefully this one will be a little bit better, a little bit more organized. This is a learning process for not just you with whatever it is that I'm showing you guys how to do, but for me as well in how to compose myself, how to introduce myself, how to edit videos, how to do anything YouTube related. So this has been pretty fun. For those of you who are new, please like and subscribe this video. For those of you who aren't new but haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Why haven't you subscribed? I'm just kidding. Um, but please also remember to click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I have posted a new video, which hopefully will be every Tuesday because it is called Tutorial Tuesdays. So yeah. Welcome to my second Tutorial Tuesday YouTube video. If you haven't seen my first video, go ahead and check that out. If you are interested in how to make polymer earrings, check that out. If you're interested in just laughing at me, check that out. I will also be posting an introductory video sort of thing, just like a featured video, which will be like the one video that kind of shows up for anyone who new to the channel because I feel like that little video that I created kind of sums up what this channel is going to be all about which I'm very excited to post as well but just keep an eye out for that one because that one's also going to be up on my channel it still feels very surreal to say on my channel but um nonetheless I'm very very happy and very excited that I've made the second video. Today's video is actually going to be about how to make a mood board. Now, for those of you who don't know what a mood board is, basically what it is is just like a group of photos and textiles and um, just inspirations, colors that you compile together um, to give you the inspiration and just to kind of organize your thoughts into how you're going to design your own line, your, like a specific line, um, a specific dress, even if it's just one garment. Um, I feel like personally making a mood board is one of the most important steps in the design process. Just because I feel like it helps me to kind of organize all of the thoughts that I have, also kind of um, pushes me to do some of the research that I need to do in order to make sure that the line that I'm designing is actually going to be well accepted into the audience and the market that I'm um, marketing towards. When I was studying in fashion school, making mood boards was kind of one of the very first steps that you take in the fashion designing process. Compiling visuals, textures, um, colors, um, to inspire an artistic look that you're going for in any kind of project that you are trying to start, whether it's fashion design, interior design, art related, honestly anything. You can even apply this into like doing your own dream board is quite a vital part of the whole creative process. Mood boards also serve a practical purpose as well. They can be essential pre-production tools and can go on to kind of drive the entire aesthetic 
of the type of project that you're trying to make. The other practical use of a mood board is that you can also use it to pitch a project idea to the producers or to the main designer or to your professors. Mood boards are actually called mood boards for a reason because your mood board is supposed to evoke the feeling that you want for your project to have. Fashion designers are really about developing kind of like a story, sharing a unique point of view. It's important that while in a big gathering stage, that you operate on an emotional stance because that's the emotion that you want to evoke through the project that you're doing. Having said that, I have heard from even professors, students, even friends who are just interested in just kind of graphic design in general, that a lot of people don't know how to make a mood board. And I remember being in that same position, I think it was like junior year, and the professor came out saying, all right, where's your mood boards? And everyone was like, huh? Most of it is because of kind of like the fear of not knowing how to use Photoshop. I know for sure, for myself that I actually started making mood boards on Canva, which you can do your mood boards on Canva. There's just a couple of things that I feel like Photoshop gives you more capability of making um, and kind of gives you a better look than what Canva does. However, I will say that it is possible for those of you who don't have Photoshop. For those of you who do have Photoshop, you guys are in luck and don't know how to use it. You guys are in luck because I will be showing you guys some of the basic kind of tools that I use in Photoshop that I feel like are the essential tools that I use to make the mood boards that I make. So that is what this video is gonna be all about. Clearly I'm very passionate about mood boards since I've had that much to say about them. So for now, I'm just gonna stop talking and just cue the actual video. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you know what the concept is of that mood board. I couldn't decide, so I had my best friend Yag decide, and she actually went with women's wear, ready to wear, and it's going to be for the season summer spring 2021 shout out to yag she'll probably make an appearance on this channel at some point i'm going to force her to be a guest on here so be on the lookout for that all right so typically after i've chosen my concept i'll go on wgsn which is a trend forecasting website it's this great amazing tool that i've always used in my college years um, that my professors actually also recommended us to use. We have, as part of Marymount's library, we are actually also subscribed to WHSN, so I'm not entirely sure if it's free for everyone, but it's definitely something that's worth investing in, honestly, because these are actual real fashion industry professionals kind of grouping all of the trends that they're seeing they'll actually do the research for you and they'll give you all the research that they've done so they'll tell you all the trends that they know are going to be um, visible during whichever season that you choose so once i'm on here i tend to like to narrow down my search i'll go by the gender um, and i'll go into like the season of course um, I'll choose apparel, but a lot of times, like the most important thing about using this website is that you make sure that you're looking through all of the possible like research that they've given you. Just because like, for example, I'm about to show you guys how I actually look at visual merchandising as well. So a lot of it is just like decoration but it all is very cohesive so i try to go on here and find information that's all kind of cohesive together that's all related to one another like colors graphics textiles um key silhouettes um just key concepts as well um i love the key the key concepts um, category that they have because they do a really great job of kind of giving you the overall theme of these 
different um, you know, trends that they see that are going to happen during that specific season. I feel like the most important thing about using WGSN is that you definitely kind of take the time to look through anything and everything you find on there curated to the season that you're going for. Just because like what I just said, you know, it's great to find inspiration in like fashion, but it's also very important to find inspiration through real world things like architecture or different images colors, textiles, everything that has to do with your season, I that's what I typically go for and I will really go slide by slide in each and every one that I feel like will help me and I will save the images, I'll even like copy and paste some of the specific words just because those words will help me to find better images that I'll also show you guys how I kind of use all that information to find better images to then put into the mood board. So you really want to make sure to take the time to look through this website and just gather all the images, all the information that you can that you feel like will help you kind of go for the overall concept that you're trying to design, you know? And so I will go to accessories, I will go to color themes, I'll go to textiles, anything and everything related to what I want to reflect in my mood board. Once I feel like I have enough information, I will actually make a folder for everything and anything that I find on the website, anything and everything that I find on Pinterest, which I will also show you guys just now, um, just so that I keep organized with anything that I find on the internet. And then I'll go on to Pinterest and use those key concepts, those key words that I found on WGSN, and I'll start making a pin board specifically for this mood board. The great thing I love about Pinterest is that once you start saving certain photos, like of certain colors, they'll recommend for you the same kind of aesthetic, which I absolutely love because it makes it, it makes you know finding these images a lot easier. And all the photos on Pinterest are always very aesthetically pleasing. So I always try to go for not only just images, but a lot of times like very great textures, like as you're seeing right now, I'm saving kind of like rugs or papers just because typically I like my mood boards to look like an actual mood board. Like I'll even put like a cork kind of background Kind of like a, you know, I like to pile up lots of different textiles, textures onto my mood board because I feel like that just kind of also helps me to kind of narrate that story that I'm trying to compel with my line, that I'm trying to compel with the concept that I'm trying to, you know, market. So as you can see, I spent a lot, and I do mean a lot of time on, on Pinterest. So if you don't like Pinterest or if you haven't used Pinterest, I highly recommend that you open a Pinterest account. I will say that you're probably going to become addicted to Pinterest. I will literally go on Pinterest for like hours and hours and hours and I won't even realize that the time has flown by. But I will start to put in those key words that I found on WGSN and I'll start to search those and then I'll start saving the photos that I have for those words. All these photos I'll, I'll save into a specific pin board so that later on I can kind of see if the photos that I've pinned all go cohesively and then I'll start deleting photos that I feel like don't really go to well together. Or I'll even also, like the great thing about Pinterest as well is that once you do make a pin board, there's an option where you can click add more and then recommend more photos that are like that. So what I'm doing here now is I'm saving all the photos, each and every photo that I have on my pin board to my computer. So into that folder that I created a couple minutes, a couple seconds ago, because I want all of that to kind of be together. And I don't want to leave any photos out because, you know, the more photos you have, the better, honestly. Then once I've opened my Photoshop, I'll create my, my board 
size to be 17 by 11 just because I feel like this is the best size for my mood boards and I'll definitely you want to make sure that your resolution is 300 because this is super important because once you print out your mood board you want to make sure that the quality of the photos are superb are like very crisp and nice um, and then I don't really do anything to advanced options. I just kind of leave that be. I'll create the board and here we are. Okay, so this is kind of where I start to dump in all those photos from Pinterest and even some of the photos from WGSN. I want to teach you guys this really great trick. I use the magic wand to kind of outline certain photos. For example, this little tape piece or this little piece of paper, I'll delete the outside of it um, and then I'll just keep the piece of paper just because I really like this kind of scrapbooking kind of look and I'll do the same for um, other images like these but then I'll kind of also sometimes use the polygonal lasso tool to kind of deselect. To deselect you want to press the option or alt button while you're using that lasso tool to deselect little areas where sometimes the magic wand doesn't really understand that it's part of the image and so I feel like that's a great kind of way of not just having rectangular photos in your um, you know mood board but to also have like different shapes in the mood board like for example in this little kind of paper um, boat I'm actually using the magnetic lasso tool just because, you know, like I was saying, you know, the, the magic wand won't always identify certain things in certain photos. So you kind of have to like guide it throughout the entire thing. But I just love kind of mixing different shapes into my mood board because I feel like it looks more natural. It also gives it more kind of a place for your eye to kind of go throughout the entire photo and it doesn't look also super repetitive don't get me wrong it's super important to have it look cohesive but at the same time you don't want it to be super boring which is why i like to incorporate different shapes so once i'm happy with the images that i've chosen for the mood board i'll just go around and kind of play with different tools on photoshop like right here i'm actually using the elliptical marking tool um to kind of crop the photo into a circular kind of way and as well as going back with the magnetic lasso tool to kind of not get rid of the entire background of this photo but to kind of give more depth to the photo by making her a little bit smaller and kind of having that little outline, that transparent outline around her. And like again, I'll just play around with every single little piece of the Photoshop, of the images that I've chosen for this mood board. I'll just kind of play around until I feel like I'm happy with how it looks, until I feel like there's enough balance. like my eye is just traveling throughout the entire mood board it's not just staying in one little focal point and i feel like the photos and the images and the colors are very cohesive but at the same time like you know like you definitely want to make sure that it's not it doesn't all look the same which is why i love pinterest because literally you're gonna find everything on there Sometimes I'll take away some of the photos, like this one, I'll spend a little bit of time trying to fix it, but then I'll just delete it all together. Um, and I'll find a different photo, just one that I feel like has better, that it kind of um, interprets the colors a little bit better. So you'll see in a couple minutes that I actually just delete it completely and find a better one on Pinterest. And I'll just, like I said, I'll pile things on top of each other, different textures, different shapes and sizes. I'll even put a little bit of that research that I did on WGSN just to kind of show that there is reason behind why I've chosen certain colors and why I've chosen like a certain aesthetic to it. And to remind myself that this is the overall theme. I love these images like these that kind of contain like little shades of color because I feel like they just kind of finish off the photo really, really well. 
I just love finishing off my mood boards with these just because I feel like I use these in all of my mood boards just because I feel like it really it does a really good job of kind of explaining the colors and also not necessarily limiting myself because especially these where they have different shades of the same color I feel like it allows me to have a little bit more um, liberty a little bit more freedom to kind of choose different colors for my fabrics for my overall color theme and I'll just add like little tape details for example like I just showed and once I'm happy with it I'll save it as a uh, Photoshop document but then I'll also save it as a JPEG and a PNG and I'll explain why sometimes it just kind of depends on what you choose to do sometimes like the PNG will be really great because I feel like sometimes the PNG will have a little bit better quality than just a JPEG um, sometimes I'll even save it as a PDF um, if I want to like actually print it off. It just kind of depends on what you're going to do with it. And so I try not to limit myself. So I'll just save any kind of format that I could possibly need. Once I'm done saving it to my computer though, I feel like it's best if I just save it onto my Google Drive because if anything would happen to my laptop, I'll still have it backed up onto my Google Drive. And this way I can also access it on my phone as well. Sometimes if I just want to like save the photos of the mood boards or of the overall line or the specs, I could just easily just like open it up into my lap, my phone and just save it onto my camera roll. So I absolutely love using Google Drive. And here is the final product. I absolutely loved how this mood board came out just because I feel like I did a really good job of kind of evoking that kind of like very like loungy kind of um, ready to wear where you're using a lot of pastels and it's very calm and collected but at the same time very modern. I really wanted to use textures that were very kind of like soft but very natural textures. So you can see that I'll use like linens a lot of like really nicely hand woven textures as well as well as patterns that were plaid because i did see that that was one of the major um, graphic concepts trending around that same period which is the spring summer 2021 season and i wanted to go with the overall theme that they one of the action points that they kind of pointed out on wgsn which was homespun Essentially, homespun is a theme that is very sophisticated and timeless, but it's also very honed with a sustainable ethos because it returns to slow craft and the art of making. It's also very appealing to a discerning minimalist to value longevity in an increasingly fast-paced world that we live in. So I really wanted to use images that kind of evoked that same feeling. So yeah, that was mostly it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope the tips and um, the video itself was easy to understand and follow. Um, if anyone has any further questions that I might have missed, um, please let me know in the questions, like in the comments, please. Um, you guys can also follow me on Instagram and DM me if you guys are interested. I'll put my Instagram here as well as all the other social places that you can connect with me, I guess. This video was actually pretty, pretty fun to make. Um, I love making mood boards. I love just kind of thinking of a concept and then incorporating that concept into some research that I've done and then kind of make my own kind of interpretation of those trends, for example, and the concept and just kind of apply my own creativity to make a mood board. I don't know, it's just the process of it is just like so fun to me and I absolutely love it. And I hope that maybe if you apply these tips to your own process that you will also find that it's very, very fun to do. So yeah, if this video has helped you at all, please let me know. Share it with your other friends, your other design classmates. If anyone's from MU, Y'all know my email. Hopefully you can just search me up because I haven't deleted it and I um, don't have an alumni email, but we're just gonna, it's fine. Um, but if you just type in my name, you'll find my email and you can just email me with any questions that you have. 
I'll be on Instagram this week kind of doing like a poll to see what people would like to watch next. Um, so stick around. I don't even know what next week video is going to be. So this is pretty exciting. So stay tuned for next week's Tutorial Tuesday. So yeah, hope you liked it. That I'm a fan. I'm hoping you guys like that because I kind of like it. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know how to do the vibes. So yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed. And of course, please like, subscribe, click the bell button to get notified for next week's video. It's gonna be pretty exciting.